LaSalle students showed off their directing and acting skills with a special theater production. Hello, I'm Erin Holly. And I'm Nick Paleo. Everyone's favorite spot for hoagies is testing out a brand new menu item. We have all this and more coming up on LTV News, where the action never stops. Hello and welcome to LTV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and Olney Avenue, Philadelphia, and the world. There is a lot to catch up on in the next half hour, as producer Sam Long had the chance to sit down with the committee head of Global Language Awareness Week. So let's hear the buzz around campus. The second annual Explorathon brought the LaSalle community together to raise awareness for pediatric cancer. Julie Wood got to learn more about this dance marathon on campus. Check it out. On February 22nd, LaSalle held its second annual Explorathon. This four hour dance marathon brought the community together to benefit the Be Positive Foundation. It's also known as the Andrew McDonough Foundation, and pretty much that foundation is located in Delaware and focuses on getting families financial assistance if their child is dealing with cancer. For us, it's a smaller base of like what Thon, like at Penn State or UDL, they do Be Positive there as well. Much smaller base, but we're trying to make it bigger every year. Uh, it's just four hours of just getting together with your friends, uh, getting to understand why we're doing this, and also understanding just having a great time. The night consisted of food, dancing, performances, and Minute to Win It games, along with banners that students could help decorate to show why Explorathon was important to them. Last year was when I fell in love with Explorathon. Our Be Positive hero, Lily, I danced with her all, all night last year, so that's what really got me involved in Explorathon. By the end of the night, the grand total was more than $22,000, a culmination of a year of planning and fundraising for an organization that is meaningful to so many people. I think working with so many different people has been the best part of this exec is really diverse and we come from a lot of different backgrounds. Everyone has their own story on why they wanted to help out the Be Positive Foundation and Explorathon. So that's been really cool to learn everyone's why and why they um, felt so strong to help out. For LTV News, I'm Julie Wood. So, Nick, I'm sad to hear that you missed Explorathon. It was so much fun. I know. This is the second year they've been doing it. I know Penn State just had their thon, and that's yeah, always a Yeah, it was the same event. weekend. Right, and I'm so glad that LaSalle had the idea to bring a mm -hmm. thon and Explorathon, adding on our Explore mascot onto this idea. Yeah. Um, and I know it was a great time. I heard the dance team was there. Cheer was there. There yeah. was food. It was very lively. Did you do a lot of dancing? or? I didn't get to do a lot of dancing because I was actually also filming it with Julie um, for my Comp 208 class. I'm also doing a package on Explorathon. Okay. So I got to learn a lot about it and um, pediatric cancer fundraising. Very exciting. Very so we'll look out for, uh, for that next year. Mm -hmm. On February 21st and 22nd, the mask held its annual Mavericks show that allows students to show off their writing and acting skills for one weekend. Mavericks are one act plays that are written and produced by students. And while the mask hosts this event, participation is not limited to just mask members. Students are able to submit scripts, cast their shows with those willing to perform on the Dan Rodden stage, and create props and costumes. This year's plays, which are traditionally more lighthearted and comedy-based, included titles like Turbulence, The Wise Guy Convention, and Fairly Odd Murders, which was a fun take on the show Fairly Odd Parents. If you missed this mask production, look out for their spring play, and then there were none. Fran Dunphy, a LaSalle alumnus, will receive an honorary degree from the university at LaSalle's 2020 commencement. Dunphy was a former basketball player at LaSalle and went on to win more games than any other coach in the Philadelphia Big Five history. LaSalle president Dr. Colleen Hanich says that she is proud to present Dunphy with this degree, saying, quote, he also deserves recognition for the deep commitment he holds to his community and several charitable causes, which aligns with our LaSallean spirit and faith and our mission to serve and support others. We are proud of Fran's accomplishments on and off the basketball court, and we are honored to recognize him with awarding an honorary degree at this year's commencement ceremony, end quote. 
LaSalle is looking for international ambassadors. An ambassador is an international student committed to international programs and awareness. They will be responsible for distributing knowledge about their own culture, as well as welcome new international students and families to LaSalle. The deadline to apply for this opportunity is April 15th. Are you a student looking to become a STEM teacher and are looking for some extra money? LaSalle is one of six partnered institutions of the Philadelphia Regional Noise Partnership to share a $1.45 million National Science Foundation five-year collaborative grant to recruit, prepare, and train system teachers. To apply for the scholarship, students must be majoring in a STEM discipline and complete their secondary teacher certification in the graduate programs in education. Awardees must commit to teaching for two years in a high school district for the scholarship becomes a repayable loan. For more information, visit lasalle.edu and look for more info under the Graduate Student tab. Global Languages Awareness Week allows students to explore the world right on campus. Sam got to find out more about this fun-filled week with Bianca Abate. Check it out. Hello, today I'm sitting down with fellow Camden Catholic graduate Bianca Abate, a longtime friend of mine, to talk about Global Language Awareness Week here at LaSalle. Bianca, thanks for uh, sitting down with us today. So to start, can you explain what <coughs> Global Language Awareness Week is? Sure. Uh, Global Language Awareness Week is basically a week in March that celebrates the study of foreign languages and learning a second or third or tenth language, basically. Now, how do you guys go about celebrating that? So this is our second year uh, hosting uh, Global Language Awareness Week. And essentially, the Foreign Language Department hosts this event. And we basically have a bunch of cultural programming uh, throughout the week. So um, for example, Tuesday, we're going to have a food affair. Um, we're going to have cultural presentations on Wednesday. We'll have a salsa night. Uh, we have a job fair Thursday. We also have um, we also have a Japanese cultural night, and we have other uh, cultural programming as well. Okay, so you said cultural presentations. Are you guys going to be bringing in outside people for that, or is it just like in-house language professors, department chairs here? So really, anyone can do a cultural presentation, and they're just these short, fifteen-minute uh, presentations in which students and faculty talk about something from maybe a culture that they observe or even a culture they're interested in studying. Um, so, yeah. It's so you great. said uh, culture interested in studying. So you don't have to have a full understanding of the culture in order to give any kind of presentation like that? You can just do general research? Um, you could if you wanted to. It's pretty informal. We just want to celebrate okay. uh, learning about uh, different types of practices and people in the world. Now, are there any differences from how it was celebrated last year to this year? Any changes to it? Anything <clears throat> better? Or? Uh, last year, the first year, was definitely a very grassroots uh, movement for the Foreign Language Department to pull this event off. But um, this year, we have a lot more people um, in the planning process, so we definitely have a lot more of an organized curriculum. We're also adding the Japanese Culture Night um, so those are some of the changes that we'll see. Did you have a lot more time to plan this year compared to last year? Uh, we did. It's definitely kind of hard to get together because we sort of start in the fall and then with the break uh, we have to account for that missed time. So we meet every Tuesday um, just to go over uh, these, uh, the planning process. Now, after you ran it for the first time last year, have you seen a much bigger turnout for people who want to get involved, people who are trying to join up, everything like that? Definitely. Uh, people especially ask about the food fair, which is happening on Tuesday during the free period in Alni. Um, people always ask about that all the time. That's definitely our most popular event, so my roommate always tells me to remind her when it's going to happen. Sorry to correct you, but you mean the Heyman building now. Oh, the Heyman. Names change. It's all right. It's all right. It it's happened. It's Alni in my heart. But. Yeah, me too. But uh, so what will you be doing for the event? Um, so basically, I am the committee chair for Global Languages Awareness Week. Um, I, uh, the, as far as which event I'll be undertaking, I, I would say I've uh, sort of helped in facilitating uh, the 
food fair because that's my favorite event. But uh, we sort of just work as a team, um, really, with everything, and we delegate different responsibilities to everyone. Okay. Uh, so, what language and culture is what you're like focusing on for this event? Um, we try to represent as many cultures uh, as we can. Um, so, I mean, really, we have uh, we have anything from, say, Spanish and Italian to Russian and Ukrainian. Uh, at the food fair, we'll have uh, things like Malaysian food, Afghan food. Um, so we really just want to represent every part of the world that we uh, observe in LaSalle. Now, what language is your specialization in? Me? Yes. So um, at LaSalle, I've studied uh, Russian, Italian, and German. Um, but I would say I'm best with Russian. Actually, my shirt today is in Russian. Okay. Yep. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Isa, in high school, we studied Latin together. We did. I, we Go. were both Latin scholars. Yes, we were both Latin scholars. And it's a living language. So since you study Russian, can you tell me how to say, I'm going to send it back to the desk in Russian? If you, don't, if you can't translate that, it's not a big deal. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't, I don't know that I... Pismeni stole is a desk. I'm going to send it back. That's, that's a tough one. I don't know if I could do that. All right. Well, I'm going to send <laughs> it back to what she said. Don't remember it. But How about this? Do svidanya. Bye. What she said. I'm going to send it back to the desk. Thanks. I think this Global Languages Awareness Week is a great idea, uh, especially for our campus. Yeah, me too. LaSalle is very diverse student yeah, population. It, yeah, so not just with students within the United States. We have students coming from the West Coast and from down south, um, but from students all over mm -hmm. the world as well. Yeah. And it really helps that we are part of a larger LaSallean network. So people are coming from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, and just getting to interact with those different students and celebrate it is really cool. I know there's one event called Anna March with Sushi. There's going to be music. Yeah, I just heard about that. Um, music, Sounds like a lot food, of fun. Games. Yeah, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time for our first break. But coming up, an iconic city figure was caught trespassing a major event. Stay tuned. According to statistics, 40 million adults suffer from depression or anxiety. One in four college students are affected by this as well. You never know who is going through something, so you should always be kind to one another. God, I swear, these sports show hosts just get dumber and dumber as time goes on. Like, I can't believe people are actually paid money, real money, more than what I make at my job to say this stupid stuff. Like, I can't believe this crap. Oh, my God. I'm just going to, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it. Like, this is just, how can they even, like... Hey, what you doing? This stupid sports show. These people have no idea how the game of basketball is played. Not at all. Hey, you're not you when you don't watch the South TV. Here, let me show you. You're not you when you're not watching LaSalle TV. To stay up to date, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.
Welcome back. The installation ceremony for Archbishop Nelson Perez was not without its controversy. Michael Grant, a.k.a. Philly Jesus, was inside the Cathedral Basilica of Saints Peter and Paul when a security officer approached him and asked him to leave. Grant was dressed in his signature white robe and attempted to stand his ground, but he was eventually dragged out by multiple police officers. Video has surfaced of Grant sitting handcuffed on the curb, being issued a violation for trespassing, to which he replied, quote, I forgive you for trespassing passing against me. Grant is planning on taking legal action, feeling he was unfairly targeted and for violating his religious rights. A new SEPTA feature will ease the concerns of commuters on the Broad Street Line. SEPTA has recently started the process of installing countdown timers at every stop on the line with the intent of also installing them on the Market Frankfurt Line. The timers will display how long it will take for the next train to arrive at any given stop. The system seems similar to the already implemented system in many regional rail stations, including the Center City 30th Street Station, as well as every stop on the New York City Metro. SEPTA says that it plans to install the last countdown clock on the Broad Street Line by November 2020, while the Market Frankfurt Line is planned for 2022. A Philly nonprofit in Center City has made it its mission to connect the nation's military veterans with rescued dogs. Pets for Vets focuses on training dogs to become loyal companions to veterans to help them improve their mental health. Many veterans deal with the daily struggles of PTSD and loneliness. The dogs act as a way to bring comfort and support to help handle these challenges. The program has so far had overwhelming success and the nonprofit hopes to expand, but they are looking for more trainers and foster parents for the dogs. If you're interested in learning more about this nonprofit or are looking to volunteer and help, visit PetsForVets.com. A lucky Wawa customer in Southwest Philadelphia is $3 million richer after recently winning a scratch-off game with a ticket purchased at this local convenience store. This news comes just as another $3 million lottery ticket was sold at an LMP Express store in Northeast Philadelphia. The recent winning ticket was purchased at the Wawa on West Bartram Avenue last week. But the customer isn't the only one benefiting after this lucky purchase. The Wawa store itself will receive a $10,000 bonus just for selling the ticket. Now that's some good luck. In other recent news about Philly's favorite store, Wawa says that it is introducing hamburgers, breaded chicken sandwiches, and waffle fries at a half dozen stores in the evenings as part of a larger dinner platform. The Philadelphia Business Journal first reported the news on Wawa's test. The news immediately spread on social media among Wawa fans and pitted the chain against McDonald's, Popeyes, and other fast food chains. The reason for Wawa's attempt at luring in a dinner crowd is due to Americans typically filling up their gas tanks during the evenings, so convenience store owners are seeking an opportunity to bring them inside during their visit. Not all Wawa's are participating in this change just yet, but the restaurant industry should pay close attention to convenience retailers. Coming up after this last break, another fast food chain is making a unique food debut to their menu. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Plymouth Rock and other historical landmarks were found vandalized Monday as the city of Plymouth, Massachusetts gets ready to celebrate the 400th anniversary of the Pilgrims' arrival to the New World on the Mayflower. Graffiti was spray painted all over the historical landmarks, upsetting the people of the town. Not more than a week later, the same people presumably graffitied the town's 9-11 memorial and pushed over statues. While the investigations are ongoing, the Plymouth community has come together to support each other and fix the damage. President Trump has been under criticism following a series of controversial pardons of supporters that were convicted of corruption. Trump granted clemency to 11 people last Tuesday. Among those was former Illinois Governor Rod Bohovich, who appeared on Trump's NBC show, The Celebrity Apprentice. In addition to the governor, eight of the 11 pardoned had ties to Trump's and his associates. Democrats criticized Trump's decisions saying that president is handing out pardons to supporters and well-connected people instead of, quote, helping any of the 13,000 federal inmates who have petitioned for clemency, unquote. Uber has an, launched a new safety feature on its app to help riders report non-emergency issues. The driving service allows riders to share their safety concerns about their driver as they're still in the Uber. Non-emergency issues include texting while driving or other forms of distracted driving. This feature will be in the safety toolkit in the app under Report Safety Incident. Once reported, Uber's safety team will follow up with the issue. Burger King has introduced their new sandwich, the Chip Buddy. A patty-less sandwich with french fries, mayo, and ketchup in between two buns. The inspiration behind the new sandwich came from a happy culinary accident with one of the chain's chefs. According to a message Burger King New Zealand posted to its Facebook page earlier this month, with that accident, in came the idea for the Chip Buddy and the Chip Buddy with bacon. It's only available to New Zealand customers right now, but many people hope the sandwich will make its way overseas. Now, well, that sounds interesting. Check out these two hashtag what's trending trends. First up, everyone loves their neighborhood Walmart, but one employee's recent social media stardom has made us love the big box store even more. Meet Charlene Mull, the electronics department manager at the Walmart in Northeast Maryland, a sleepy town of less than 4,000 people. As a way to add a little more excitement to her daily work routine, Charlene has posed for a number of hilarious pictures for the store's Facebook page. Many are calling Charlene the Internet's new grumpy cat. I call this marketing gold. From posing with milk's favorite cookie to lounging on bird seed, Charlene's photo shoot defies description. Thousands have signed a petition asking Ellen DeGeneres to have Charlene on her show. Many have also planned road trips to stand in the presence of the viral sensation. Ronnie Backenstow became a Girl Scout when she was just 10 years old. That was 88 years ago. Now, as a 98-year-old, Ronnie is still a part of a troop and sells cookies every year. This Pennsylvania native, who was born in 1922, joined the Girl Scouts the same year that Amelia Earhart became the first woman to make a solo air crossing the, over the Atlantic Ocean. Back then, there were only three Girl Scout cookies, and each box only cost 15 cents. There are now many kinds of flavors of the organization's famous cookies, but Ronnie says that her favorite kind is peanut butter. Well, I'm a big Girl Scout cookie fan. Look what I found under the desk. Is that even peanut butter, too? That is peanut butter. <laughs> That's Ronnie's favorite kind. It's Ronnie's favorite, so in honor of Ronnie, we have some cookies. You some. should eat one. I can't Why? eat one. Why can't one. you have any? I can't eat one because I gave cookies up for Lent. Oh, y'all, that's fine. <laughs> and I'm also not a big fan of peanut butter, but they're all for you. <laughs> so what's your favorite Girl Scout cookie, as I should eating these? Um, probably the thanks a lot. The, they're the shortbread those? ones with the chocolate on the back, and they have thank you on them in different languages. Oh, so cool. I know. I love those I ones. like Thin Mints. I like Penny Butter Patties. Actually, those are... No, I'm Thin so, Mints! I'm so picky. I don't really even like Thin Mints either. What's wrong with Thin Mints? What do I, they ever do to you? Well, all right, I do just do don't like peanut butter mixed with chocolate or mint mixed with chocolate. Do you like anything? <laughs> I'm really picky. I've, <laughs> I've told you this before. Yeah, we can't have, we have, we can't have regular milk. <laughs> yeah, I don't like regular milk either. If you ate those with milk, I would just... I don't know what I would do right well, now. Well, I have milk under the... I'm no. just kidding. I don't have milk. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Can you know imagine if we get a mini fridge under here? 
oh, keep my milk store secret mini fridge under the desk. <laughs> All right. Well, that just about does it for this episode, but be sure to find us on the web as well as the rest of LaSalle TV on our Facebook page. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so tweet at us using our Twitter handle and start the conversation. If you missed the scoop and want to see it, you can find episodes on YouTube on our LaSalle TV Philly page. Until next time, for Aaron Holly, Sam Long, and the entire crew, I'm Nick Paleo. Thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops. Thank you.